to be with you all today. And I want to spend some time talking about what I believe to be a disturbing trend, and that is an increase in the use of one-sided facts. Before we go any further, let me define what I mean when I say one-sided facts. I'm talking about selectively using facts to support an opinion. I'm talking about carefully cultivating a list of facts to support an opinion. And sometimes I'm even talking about altering or manufacturing facts to support an opinion. I think that you see this most often in our political culture here in America. But I think that the use of one-sided facts is so problematic because it's creating this chasm or this divide between fact and truth. You see, facts are powerful because of our belief that they are facts. So if we're only getting partial truths or only a snippet of the truth, really collectively as a society, we're moving further away from the truth. And before you think, oh, I know who she's talking about. She's talking about those people. They are really bad about using one-sided facts. I mean, I may be talking to some people more than others, but the reality is that we're all guilty of using or promoting one-sided facts, at least to some degree. Arguably, this is a product of our environment, right? We're in this age where we have more information available to us at our fingertips than ever before. And we all know that social media and powerful tech companies have created algorithms that feed us information that we are more likely to agree with. But in creating these shortcuts of navigation, we have become siloed with people who also think like us. So this collective problem, I believe, has to have a collective solution. I think that the key to combating one-sided facts is by working together, but I also think that there are three specific things that we can do to combat one-sided facts. But before I share those with you, I wanna share a story. And I can assure you that as a high school teacher, I have no shortage of stories that I could share with you. But in this one particular instance, I was teaching AP World History. And part of that curriculum is to teach the origins of major world religions. So I was teaching about the origins of Christianity and talking about Jesus of Nazareth and how he was born a Jewish person to a Jewish family in a very Jewish context. And immediately a student disagreed with me and said, Ms. Shadid, how can that be true? How can Jesus have been Jewish? And we went back and forth and I tried to explain everything, but he left my classroom pretty unconvinced of anything that I was trying to tell him. He came back the next day and showed me this website that he had found that proudly proclaimed, Jesus was not Jewish, Jesus was a Christian. And it only took me a minute to realize that he was showing me an anti-Semitic website. Now he didn't believe those things, he had just found something that kind of supported what he was thinking. But we sat down and I talked to him and we went through that website and looked at how they had manipulated historical facts to support their hateful opinion. We had a great conversation and he finally left my classroom being convinced of what I was trying to tell him. But this is my point, that to combat one-sided facts, it takes time, it takes honest conversations, and above all, I think that it takes personal relationships. So here are the three things that I think we can do to combat one-sided facts. The first thing I think we all need to do is to test our own thinking. We all know that we have biases and opinions and blind spots in our thinking. And I think that we need to adopt a spirit of humility to first look inward to see where our shortcomings may be before we can do anything else. You know, psychology has a lot to tell us about biases and thinking, but two I wanna to briefly touch on are the confirmation bias and the anchoring bias. The confirmation bias tells us that we are likely to seek out information or facts that support our opinions, and we're more likely to ignore information that is contrary to our opinions. And then the anchoring bias tells us that we give a great amount of weight to the first piece of information that we hear about a topic and it takes a lot of work to overturn that initial piece of information. In order to overcome these biases in our thinking and other related biases, 
I think that we need to become more like scientists, and I think that we need to diversify our algorithms. So let's talk about being more like scientists. Scientists are naturally skeptical, right? That's kind of the whole point of the scientific method, is that they're trying to prove their hypotheses wrong in order to see if they are in fact correct. And I think that when we're talking about our political opinions, we need to do the same. We need to lay out all of the facts and information that is available to us because we can't just ignore facts just because they don't align with our opinions. And I think that in getting all of the information out, we will be able to test our own thinking. And then I also think we need to diversify our algorithms. One place where I feel like I've been particularly successful with this is on Twitter. I follow a lot of people that I tend to agree with and a lot of people that I tend to disagree with. But I really enjoy seeing that variety in perspective and opinion, especially when a major event in our country happens, because I'm immediately able to see how people are using facts and what people are thinking. So I think after we've done this internal work, we can move to a more macro level approach. And this is where the second thing comes into play, which is leveraging our personal relationships. Okay, just think about Facebook for one minute. Even just in the past year, how many of you have seen a fight break out in the comments section of a Facebook post? Maybe you've been engaged with it, right? But we've all seen something like this happen, this very argumentative and combative approach to talking about political issues. And it's kind of a shame because in this argumentation, I don't think really much is being accomplished because the more that we dismiss and demean and other people, the more that we remain siloed to our individual ways of thinking. I'm sure just like you, um, I've had a lot of uh, free time on my hands this past year, right? And one thing that I've enjoyed doing is personally messaging people on social media when they post something that I might disagree with because I wanna hear more of their perspective and I wanna hear where they are coming from. Sometimes people don't message me back or they don't wanna to talk to me, which is fine. But I've gotten into some really rich conversations with people who I may tend to disagree with, but at the end of the day and at the end of the conversation, we're able to walk away with a better understanding of each other and of why we think the way that we do. In leveraging our personal relationships, I think we can take some good advice from best practices in the classroom. You see, before I have debates or discussions in my classroom, we always lay out ground rules. And typically these are suggested by the students themselves. So students will say, you know, hey, before we start this conversation, we need to make sure that we're listening to each other. We need to make sure that we're respecting each other. And these things are so important. And that is the groundwork for the conversations that we should be having outside of a classroom as well. But this past fall, one of my students said something particularly insightful. He said, that we need to be okay with changing our minds as we are debating. And I think that it's this attitude that we all need to adopt. Not only should we be willing to listen to each other, but we should be willing to learn from each other. Because all of us have something to offer and our unique ways of thinking can, can help to enrich our broader society and move us back towards the truth. And that's where this third thing comes into play focusing on the type of culture that we are creating. You know, there's that old adage that says, never bring up politics or religion at a dinner party. And to be honest with you, I've never understood why that piece of advice was given, because I personally love talking about both politics and religion. I enjoy sharing my viewpoints, and I really enjoy hearing what others have to say as well. I think that the intention behind that piece of advice was to not offend anybody, right? Or to not get in an argument or walk away from the dinner table angry at each other. But why do we have this combative spirit when approaching these types of conversations? Instead of being focused on arguing with one another, we should be focused on listening to each other and learning from each other, and that will help us to move closer towards the truth. So in approaching these conversations, I think that we need to adopt that spirit of humility and really be willing to learn from one another. In order to bridge the gap between fact and truth, I think that we need to combat one-sided facts. And in order to combat one-sided facts, I know that we need each other. Thank you.